Weapon resonances are a way to buff your characters and give them extra damage, more pings, or just better quality of life features. Things that just make things a tad simpler and or better. So I got to thinking, why not just go over each and every one and talk about their pros and cons? Due to the nature of how different classes have buffs that are useful in their own ways, we'll be going over them individually. Important note, this list only applies to meta valuability. However, a couple of these, I might mention how they might be useful somewhere else. Okay, so when it comes to five-star resonances, there is literally only one. It gives an attack and crit up. It would be best used on a physical unit like Alpha Crimson Abyss if you don't have her signature, but that's really all there is to that. They're easy to resonate due to how easy it is to get five-star weapons, and there is literally only one resonance available to them. What the hell even is shock saturation? I'm sorry, but what the actual hell was Kuro Games thinking with this one? Congratulations, you got hit. So here is free two seconds of invincibility time. Where is this actually useful? Not Warzone, since they don't even really hurt you all that much. That, you're supposed to be running a full team, and if that team doesn't have a support or amplifier, well then you're screwed. It's also not all that useful during something like 12Ks due to the fact that if you don't get one tapped, you're either spamming your healer or trying to not get hit again if it's a solo run. Up next is Shock Echo, which is basically shock saturation, but slightly buffed. Once again, you should be avoiding damage at all costs. But with this, you get damage and it releases a shockwave that deals some damage back and pushes enemies away. It's literally just slightly better, but still dog ass. Have you been having a skill issue in the game and thinking to yourself, hey, I need a bigger dodge gauge? Well, there's a resonance for that. It's called NSEC Transmission. Remember when I said skill issue? Because if I'm being honest, PGR gives you enough of a dodge gauge that it becomes more about you as the player learning how and when to dodge. Now we're moving on to the better stuff. And while Incandescence is still the worst of the attack buffing resonances, add that to the fact that it gets outclassed by the attacker exclusive buff Glorious Afterglow, more on that later, and the fact that you're probably using attack buffing resonances on attackers, still, it's solid if you just want to throw an attack buff on your unit for a solo 12k or something of that nature. Imagine you're playing good as hell and stylish, but you want to move even faster. That, my dear viewers, is where Matrix Lightning comes into play. This resonance triggers upon triggering a matrix, which it happens when you perfect dodge. When triggered, movement speed is greatly increased and enemies take 10% extra damage. It's just an overall win for playing good. Glorious Afterglow. While exclusive to only attackers, it is one of the highest priorities to throw on them. Essentially, your weapon gives you an attack stat, and that stat is increased by a whopping 30% for 8 seconds upon a 3 ping. Oh, and the duration resets every 3 ping you do, so essentially it's an attack buff where the only timer is how many 3 pings you have. Deadline Timing. What does it do, and why do I glaze it so goddamn hard? This resonance upon deployment gives you two extra random signal orbs and gives you three signal orbs of the same color every 45 seconds, which by the way applies to characters that are even on standby. So why do I say it's probably the king of all resonances? It doesn't have an attack buff and it, it doesn't ignore enemy defense. The answer is quite simple. PGR combat revolves around signal orbs and quite a few characters with a few exceptions simply play better and function better when they have more pings to ping. Now, add that to the fact that there are some characters that don't even function properly without deadline timing, and you'll start to understand why I glaze it so damn hard. Yes, it stands out most in longer drawn out fights like 12Ks or Warzone for extra pings so you can score higher, and while in PPC, you could very well argue that it's next to useless, however, it's something I slap on basically all my units simply because it makes it easier to work around orbs especially on runs where you get bad orb luck. And now we move on to the amplifier and support class. And to start off our list with the absolute worst exclusive support buff that we have on the list, we got Stellar Magnetic Rail. Upon QTE, it restores your dodge gauge by 400 for the construct and control. For reference, a single dodge takes up the 250 dodge gauge. So while it definitely isn't nearly as bad as some of the others in the general class. It's still bad when you consider that there is a healing and attack buffing that is also resonance options for the support exclusives. So to summarize, if you have a skill issue and trouble dodging, this may help alleviate some of that, but it won't help you get good. Next up, we have Peaceful Radiant, which when you use the healing skill or effect, increases it by 30% for five seconds. And the cooldown is eight seconds. 
Listen, this skill would be higher on the priority list if it didn't get so easily outclassed by the next resos. Uh, speaking of, Bone Gel increases the healing amount of your next healing effect by 50%. Do you see what I mean by outclassed? It's straight up an extra 20% for the same amount of cooldown. The only stipulation is that it isn't your skills healing. It's just the effects. Like QTEs, which is where most healing happens anyway. At least in my experience. Superconducting Axial Ray. This resonance increases the attack of all characters on the team by 8%. It also does not stack. Sort of. This is just overall powerful and a super useful overall buff for your supporters. Glorious Spear, which, when using a healing skill or effect, increases the full attack of the heal target, aka the unit on the field, by 10% for 8 seconds, and its cooldown is 10 seconds. So how does this barely surpass superconducting Axial Ray? Simple, you don't have to lose HP to heal. You see, even at full health, you'll still be healed by your support or amplifier. This will, in turn, rock the effect of the resonance. I should mention, however, that you can absolutely run both Glorious Spear and Axial Ray if you have at least two resonance stacks on your weapon and have an 18% attack buff. And now we move on to the tank exclusive resonances. And to start this list, we have Absolute Defense, which upon deployment, makes you invincible for a whole two seconds. And I cannot honestly think of a single use for it outside of maybe quick swapping during a 12k fight. Gravity Barrier is a resonance that gives you a shield equal to 20% of your tank's max HP upon deployment. This is useful in fights where you're already planning to get hit, but once again, considering that you should be trying to avoid that at all costs, well... Next up, Boundaries Annihilation. On QTE, shields the construct and control for 10% of the skill user's max HP, but only for 5 seconds. Kind of the same scenario with Gravity Barrier, but with this one you proc it with QTE, so it's far more useful in combat in my opinion. Resonant Echo extends the effect inflicted by the tank class units up to 8 seconds. This means you are getting a longer tank strike period, which helps with killing enemies faster, and enemies can't kill you if they are dead. Omni Elemental Resistance Reduction is a resonance that shreds the same element of the tank you're playing as for up to 8 seconds. So how does it work? Well, there is actually an elemental shred for every single element in the game, but they get merged together in Hongying's S-Range patch. But they all essentially do the same thing. That being, upon inflicting the damage type of your tank you're running, it will reduce target's resistance to said element by 8% for 8 seconds. And it refreshes every single time you hit them with that set element. This can include any character on your team, by the way. And it's also the main reason why we build teams around a single element. And now we're gonna talk about the three only available to Unifrights. Matrix Outburst to start the list. All damage is increased by 15% in Matrix. So learning to dodge and you essentially have free damage. Overload Signal, an entrance skill that grants one additional signal orb Extra damage bonus of a ping skill is increased by 10% for 8 seconds. And finally, Limit Break. Full attack, which is your attack stat, unless I'm mistaken, is increased by 10%. Overall, the unit frames seem to have the best overall resonances that are exclusive, seeing as all three are extremely useful and all serve a purpose. Unlike Shock Saturation. So that's gonna do it for this list. Honestly, the main purpose of this isn't to even rank them or anything like that. It's to inform everyone of what each one does and why you might want to use specific resonances. Once you resonate a 6-star weapon, you can switch the resonance skill at any time. So optimization all depends on the player's choice more than anything. But hopefully this video informed you all about the different resonances in the game, what they do, how they can or cannot be useful. And if you liked the video, please consider leaving a like and hitting that subscribe button uh, as it really helps me out. Also, hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I upload a new video. I stream most days over at twitch.tv forward slash Thanks to everyone who watched, and I hope you all have a good rest of your day. Take care.